So the same guy had another dream. And in that, this dream, he saw He saw the year 2022 broken into four quarters. I'm trying to decide whether or not to read this dream. Some of you, if you watch the post, you, you've heard me talk about it. It was called the, we were playing a baseball game and it was called the World Sears Series. We were playing in Washington, D.C. We were team Ecclesia, and we were playing a team that obviously at some point we came to realize represented the powers of darkness. We were, in the we were in the eighth inning of the final game of the series. The score was 20 to 22, 2022. We were ahead by two runs. Four batters came to the plate for our team in that dream. The first batter with the first assignment was the result of the previous dream when we dealt with the spirit of religion. So this dream built on the previous one so a person that had come out of a religious organization that did not b believe in the things of the spirit was the first batter now in the next dream. And his assignment was to hit the ball as hard as he could down the first baseman line, first baseline and take out the first baseman. And he hit it so hard that he decapitated the first baseman which was a spirit, not a person, so you can all be excited and not sad. <laughs> so I'm saying that just to say that first quarter of the year was when we finished that assignment from the previous dream of going into D.C. So on 222, in 22, we went to D.C. and took out that religious route, and that started this next series of assignments and dreams. Because the first thing we had to do was go after that religious thing. So what God is about to do in America and elsewhere is expose through the spirit of revelation the religious spirit and open the eyes of people to the things of Holy Spirit so they can truly see who he is and others who don't aren't even saved can receive the gospel and do not think of this as just america because i believe we are moving into a season where great Religious strongholds that have existed for centuries, even millennia, are about to be dealt with by Holy Spirit. And the clash of kingdoms will be profound. The warfare, and I have some good news for you. I'll give you the good news first, then bad news. The good news is we're going to win. He will win. The, the, the bad news is this warfare thing is not going to let up. We have moved into a time in history where until the Lord wraps this thing up, whenever that is, there will be great clashes in the spiritual realm over this nation and other nations because Satan is going to war to the end to, to, to try and overthrow the plan of God. Let me go quickly through and, and say this to you. The second batter represented in that dream the reversing of Roe. So we knew at the beginning of the year, I literally had conversations with other prophets that were helping me interpret this dream. 
I knew way back in January that the assignment for the second quarter of our year 2022 was to see the reversing of Roe. We made it with one week to spare. And I know it was the result of millions of prayers and many years of work. It wasn't because of what anything I or, 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 or we did in, in this dream. We just knew we, we were coming to a point that where we could break through. and We had to really hammer this thing in prayer. I talked about it a lot on my post. Other people did as well because I knew this is the assignment of this second quarter. We must see the reversing of this thing. But the third batter and the third quarter of this year, which we are now in, represents the role of Holy Spirit coming to help us as our strength, our power, our revelation, authority. Because the third batter, the number on his back was the number of the word in the New Testament when Jesus said, it is to your advantage that I leave because when I go, Holy Spirit's coming. So the third quarter represents us receiving the advantage of Holy Spirit beginning to do something new. We have moved into a time in history, but we've moved into a time this year where we are shifting into a different season. It's the season of Holy Spirit activity. This is a summer where he is amping up what he's doing. Our advantage is beginning to build, not because of who we are, not because of what we're doing, but because Holy Spirit is coming to us with a fresh wave of himself. And the key person in this part of the dream was a prophet. Well, she wouldn't care, so I'll tell you who it was. It's not about her, it's about what she represents. It was Jane Ammon. She was the third batter. And in this dream, she was a home run hitter. But I was the coach and I came out of the dugout and I pulled her over to talk to her before she batted. And I said, they are expecting you to go for the fence because we were already up two runs, bottom of the eighth. We have two runners on base now. If she had hit a home run, it would have put us up 25 to 22. I said, they're expecting you to go for the fence because you could break the home run record with one more home run. But don't go for the fence. You're going to bunt. And the strategy was you have to wait until you have two strikes. Because in baseball, you don't bunt with two strikes because if you hit a foul ball, if you have two strikes in baseball, you hit a foul ball, you're not out. You could keep, you keep, keep, you have to keep batting. But if you try to bunt with two strikes and you hit a foul ball, you're out. So you don't bunt with two strikes. So the point is, there was a, a surprise strategy. Hear me now. There was a surprise strategy from Holy Spirit that was coming in the third quarter to catch the enemy off guard. And it was going to require listening to Holy Spirit and it was going to require humility the ability for us to say we don't know how to do this we have to listen for you we're not just going to give in to that thing where we want to knock it out of the park you say bunt we're going to bunt you say wait until it seems like a stupid thing to do we're going to wait for then and the point is again holy spirit has strategies for this season that are not going to be typical or normal and we have to listen to them but you see we're in a season now where if we listen carefully to holy spirit 
He's going to give us strategies that load the bases. Because that's what happened in the dream. She bunted, took it completely by surprise. The other two runners advanced. She went to first. The bases are loaded for the fourth quarter. The fourth batter. The owner of Team Ecclesia called from the skybox to the coach and said, we're going to use a pinch hitter. And he said to the pinch hitter, you know this pitcher. You've dealt with him before. He's not what he thinks he is. And you, you're going you're gonna to take him out. It was at this point of the dream that we saw the name on the back of the opposing pitcher. And the name was Zephon. Z-E-P-H-O-N. Zephon. It's one of the names of Baal. Baal Zephon was the last of the gods of Baal, the Baal structure that Yahweh exposed during the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. Most of you would know that the plagues were judgments exposing the gods of Egypt. But there was one left that wasn't exposed and dealt with, and that was Baal Zephon, the god of the north, the god of winter, the god of wind, the god of the storms. He was considered the most powerful of the Baals. He ruled the seas and the winds. When Israel was leaving, they got to a certain point in the Exodus, and God spoke to Moses and said, I want you to turn around and go back to this spot right here. And you can read it later in Exodus 14. Go right back to this place where Baal Zephon is worshipped. It's where they had built the high place to him. Because it was right on the edge of the Red Sea, the base of a mountain. This is the God of the winds and the sea, the strong and mighty God. And so there was a, 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 a shrine to him there. And he says, go back to that place. But when they got back to that place, Pharaoh was coming now. And they were trapped by the mountain and the sea and the armies of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh thought, and Jewish writings actually talk about this. Pharaoh said, aha, finally one of my gods has outsmarted their God. And he has confused them and brought them back to where he rules and they are now trapped. And we can take them out. And even when the winds came and rolled back the water, he was bold enough to go in there because he thought it was Baal. God was exposing this spirit. Some scholars say, not just in a sort of, I'll show these guys who's in charge. Not, not, so, not so much an in-your-face thing. Some scholars actually believe, because he, he words it as he would, he would reveal to the Egyptians who was really God. Some of them taught that this was an act that when God judged these gods, these religions, it was his mercy showing them that they are not God. You're worshiping idols. I'm God. 
So it was redemptive, and it, they believe it was redemptive not just for Israel, but it was redemptive in the sense of God's mercy being shown to these people that you're worshiping idols that aren't gods at all. I'm God, not Zephon, not Baal. Now this fourth batter walked out, and this pitcher in the dream, Baal Zephon, looked at him and said, I'm going to take you out once and for all. I'm going to take you out, Ecclesia, Team Ecclesia. I'm going to take you out once and for all. And the fourth batter said, I know who you are, and I've dealt with you before. Throw me your best pitch. And he threw a curveball. He threw some other crazy pitches first. But then he threw a curveball, and the batter hit it so hard that it hit the spirit in the throat and took out his voice. And at the end of the dream, we knew that he would never, ever regain his hold in America. In other words, he was going to lose his voice forever. So in this crazy year, 2022, sometimes I wake up and think, have I been dreaming or have these things really been happening? In this crazy year, It is the world seers, S-E-E-R-S, -E -E seers series. This is really not, I've never said this before, but this is really not the year of the apostle. This is the year of the prophet. This is the year where we must hear very, very clearly because the spirit of revelation wants to take out the spirit of religion in this nation once and for all and deliver millions of people from the control of this spirit. and heal the river and heal Jericho from the curses.